Hi lovelies! I hope you're all happy and healthy and if you're able to, that you are safe and sound at home. Now I have to say, usually by this time of year, I am embracing spring in my cooking. So I'm using a lot of fresh seasonal produce, making more salads, more smoothies. But for me, the last few weeks have been pretty rough as I'm guessing they have been for a lot of you guys. And so I'm finding myself still craving delicious comfort foods. And as far as I'm concerned, there are very few things more comforting than a big bowl of pasta with a homemade bolognese sauce. So today I thought it would be fun to share with you my recipe for bolognese sauce. Now, I have to tell you, this is one of those recipes we make at least once a month in our household. And what I really love about it is that it makes two to three full family servings of bolognese. So you're going to do all the work once and you'll get maybe three dinners out of it, which is wonderful. This sauce freezes really beautifully. So whatever you don't use, you can pop into the freezer and then it's standing by on one of those weeknights where you just don't feel like cooking. Now, because we are going to be making a lot of bolognese here, I always recommend using your biggest pot. So whether it's a soup pot or a Dutch oven like this, you wanna make sure you've got lots of volume in there because we are going to be throwing all sorts of great ingredients inside and you'll want that extra space. This is one of my favorite pots of all time. I call it Big Red because it's basically enormous. Yes, I name my pots. I'm one of those people. I also have a cat named Big Red in case you were wondering. I'm not sure if the cat is named after the pot or the pot is named after the cat, but I digress. So we're starting with our heat over medium high and I'm just going to get a nice drizzle of oil into my pan. Now in a very traditional bolognese sauce, you'll usually find some ground beef and some ground pork. I like to keep my bolognese a little on the lighter side, so instead of pork today, I'm actually using some ground chicken. You could use the ground pork if you want to. It's really, really affordable, very flavorful as well. Or you can swap in chicken, or if you wanna double your ground beef, you have that option too. You really have tons of great options in this recipe. That's why I like it, super versatile. As soon as our oil is nice and hot, we're going to get our meat right into the pan. So I'm just gonna slide my beef into the pan like so and get it cooking away. And I'm going to get my chicken in at the very same time. Basically, all we wanna do is cook our meat until it is no longer pink. That usually takes between five and seven minutes. And while it's cooking away, we're going to use a spoon to break it up into little bits. The smaller the bits are, the better the texture of your bolognese sauce is going to be. Next, we're going to get our veggies into the pot. And I'm using a really classic combination here of onion, celery, and carrots that have all been finely chopped. I'll just let those cook away for another three or four minutes. You wanna see that celery get nice and bright green and that onion start to become nice and soft and translucent. And that's when you know it is time to add your garlic. And guys, might I just say, when it comes to garlic in this recipe, I am seriously going for it. I've got about four large cloves of garlic. You can see they're minced and they are headed into my pot. If you wanna dial back the garlic here, you definitely can. But remember, we are making a huge amount of sauce. So you're basically getting like one clove of garlic per dinner. That's very reasonable in my world. Now guys, it is time to add even more flavor. And to do that, I am going to be using some wine. Today I'm using red wine, but I have to tell you, I have made this same pasta sauce with white wine when I didn't have any red on hand, and it worked just as well. You get a slightly different flavor, but both are equally delicious. If you are not into cooking with wine, you absolutely have the option to leave it out completely in this recipe, but I do think a good splash of wine adds a ton of depth and richness and flavor to this. So it's really your call. I like to let that wine cook for another three or four minutes just until it begins to reduce and really concentrates those flavors. Now it's time for things to get a little saucy here in the Domestic Geek Kitchen, and that all starts with some crushed tomatoes. For this recipe, I'm using two large cans of crushed tomatoes. I'm going to get them right into my pot. You could also use strained tomatoes or passata. That usually comes in glass bottles at your supermarket. Both will definitely work in this recipe. To my tomatoes, I'm also going to be adding some beef broth. So beef broth has a really rich, deep, sort of savory flavor that works beautifully 
nicely in this bolognese sauce. If you only have chicken broth on hand, no problem at all. You can definitely swap that in here. This recipe is very, very forgiving. And for one more, sometimes controversial, but I think absolutely necessary ingredient, I am also going to be adding a good splash of milk. Now, a lot of people think the milk is a little on the strange side, but I will just tell you that it makes for such a creamy, delicious texture in your sauce, and you won't even notice it's there. You're really adding very little milk relative to the rest of your ingredients. So take my word for this one and go for it. Now, all that's really left at this point is to amp up the flavor factor even further, and we are going to be doing that with some dried herbs. Now, if you've been with the channel for any length of time, you guys probably know by now that I am obsessed with fresh herbs. But when it comes to sauce like this, I always insist on using dry. Why I love dry is because a little bit goes a long way. It's a lot more potent and packs a real flavor punch. So for this recipe, we are going to be adding some dried oregano. I've got some dried basil. And I've got a little bit of dried thyme as well. I'm gonna stir those in. If you don't have this exact combination of dried herbs in your spice rack, not to worry. You could also swap in a nice helping of Italian seasoning here. That would work just as well. Once you've got your herbs in the pot, you are almost to the promised land. We've just got two more ingredients to add here. The first is a little sprinkle of sugar. So this might feel really counterintuitive to add something sweet to a really savory, beautiful sauce like this, but the little bit of sugar we're going to be using, and I'm talking maybe a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, is really going to help offset the intensity of the acidity in the tomatoes. So it's going to make things a little bit more mellow. So we're gonna add just a sprinkle of sugar in there. Finally, for my favorite secret ingredient, which is always optional, but truly delicious, I am adding a Parmesan rind to my pot. Now, if you're not familiar, this is basically the rind that's left over after you've grated all of your fresh Parmesan cheese. I end up with a ton of these in the kitchen because as you guys know, Domestic Geek uses a lot of Parmesan. Uh, so I always hang on to them in the freezer and then when I'm making something like this or a soup even, my chicken noodle soup always has a Parmesan in it, it adds a really awesome savory flavor to whatever you're cooking. Basically, I just give the Parmesan a rinse and then put it straight into the pot. At this point, all we wanna do is bring our mixture to a boil, and as soon as it's reached a boil, we can reduce our heat to low, pop a lid on our pot, and let it simmer away. As with most great things in the kitchen, the longer this simmers, the more delicious it becomes. So, two to three hours is usually my goal with this recipe. In the last half hour of cooking, I like to remove the lid to help it thicken up a little bit, and more of that liquid will evaporate. At this point, the only thing left to do is to pull out that Parmesan rind, and you can see it has done all of its work. It has imparted all of its amazing flavor, so it can be discarded now. And this yumminess is ready to be served up. I am pouring it all over a nice bowl of spaghetti. You can serve it on whatever kind of pasta you want. I really, really hope that you guys will give this recipe a try. And if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because I really love seeing your kitchen creations now more than ever. Remember, this recipe is linked in the description box below, so you can find the full recipe there. And finally, guys, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.